Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we'll solve a problem from SBD and this is related to the topic of fluid mechanics and rotational motion. So give this problem a try guys and uh, and make sure you watch the entire solution through yeah, because there is a great chance that you'll actually commit a silly mistake while solving this problem and I'll cover what that is and how to make sure you don't commit that silly mistake as well. Okay, so with that, let's begin by reading the problem statement. So we have a spherical ball of radius r and that is made by joining two hemispherical parts. The two parts have densities rho and two rho. When placed in a water tank, the ball floats while remaining completely submerged. Okay guys, so it's given that uh, it's completely submerged and it's also given that it is floating, which basically means that the average density of the body must definitely be equal to the density of the fluid. What's the average density of this body? It's going to be the total mass of the body divided by its total volume. Okay, in this case, as the volume of uh, each of the parts is same, this, is sim this will simply reduce to rho plus two rho divided by two, which is three rho divided by two. And this must be equal to rho naught. Rho is equal to two thirds of rho naught. So this is the answer they required us to find in option A. In option B, they want us to find the time period of small angular oscillations of the ball about its equilibrium position. So now what we are doing is, um, we are displacing this ball by a small angle of theta about its equilibrium axis, okay? And we are required to find the time period of angular oscillations. As most of you guys must have covered SHM, first we have to displace the body by an angle of, angle of theta and then find out the restoring torque and the restoring alpha, right? So for that, uh, it's better to find out where the center of mass of the body is going to be. So, uh, and we are going to be using an information here that, that is the center of mass of a solid hemisphere is at a distance of 3 r by 8 from the center of curvature along the symmetry axis. And let's call the mass of the upper hemisphere as m and the mass of the lower hemisphere is going to be 2m as its density is double. Now the center of mass is going to be closer to the 2m mass. So let's assume it's over here, okay? The distance of the center of mass from these individual masses will be in the opposite ratio of the masses. As the ratio of masses as 1 is to 2, the ratio of these two distances will also be 1 is to 2, okay? So this green distance over here is going to be one third of this total distance, right? And the total distance is going to be six r by eight. So one third of it is two r by eight, okay? Or or you could simply say that the distance from the this horizontal line is r by eight. Basically, the center of mass is at a distance of r by eight below the horizontal line, okay? Okay, guys, so now let's say we displace the entire body by an angle of theta. So the center of mass is over here. Let's name that point as C. This is where the weight of the entire hemisphere will be acting and the weight of the total hemisphere is 3m, right? So this would be 3mg. And this distance we found it out to be r by 8. The other force is the buoyancy force and it will simply act at the center of gravity of this entire volume. That'll be at the center of the sphere. And let's call it as Fb. And let's also call the center of the sphere as point O. So basically now we have to find the restoring torque. But the thing is we have two ways of approaching this problem. We can either find the torque about point O or we can find the torque about point C. But if you guys are approaching this problem by finding the torque about point O, then you have to pay attention to one very important fact. And that is that the point O is an accelerated point. What I'm trying to say is if you want to apply tau equal to I alpha about any other point other than the center of mass, then you first have to find the acceleration of that point and then you have to apply the pseudo force on the center of mass and then you have to take into account the pseudo torque because only then you can write tau equal to i alpha about the point o or a any other point as a matter of fact so let's say we have to write tau equal to i alpha about this point a okay so let's find the acceleration of a so as we have no omega there won't be any centripetal component let's assume the the angular acceleration of the sphere is alpha so the acceleration of point a is going to be r alpha in this particular direction Okay, where r is this particular distance. More precisely, it will be alpha cross r. So now, if you want to write tau equal to alpha about a, you have to account for the pseudo force due to this acceleration. So you have to reverse and add an m r alpha component and you have to account for the pseudo torque because of this. Okay, then you can write tau equal to i alpha about point a. And the alpha of a rigid body is the same about any point. So there's that. You also have to find the moment of inertia of the body about point A. So I'll be doing it by taking the torque about point O. Okay, so first uh, let's just determine the acceleration of point O. So again, alpha is considered in the anticlockwise sense. So R alpha would be in this direction. So this is going to be R alpha divided by eight because this distance over here is R by eight. So the pseudo force has to be uh, applied on the center of mass and that is going to be three M 
times r alpha by 8. So now let's write the torque about the point O. First, let's consider the torque due to the weight, the horizontal distance from point O from the axis that is r by 8 sine theta, and then the pseudo torque that would be 3m alpha times r square by 64. Okay guys, so the moment of inertia, the contribution due to the upper hemisphere is going to be 2 by 5 mr square and the moment contribution due to the lower hemisphere is going to be 2 by 5 times 2 mr square, right? So this would simply become 6 by 5 mr square. So now we can simply write tau about O equal to I times alpha about O. Okay guys, so and after solving, okay, so and after solving you get this expression guys and we are talking about small angular oscillations. So sine theta can be approximated as theta. So the restoring alpha comes out to be directly proportional to theta, which means that the oscillations under consideration is an SHM, is an SHM. And the time period of oscillation for an SHM is simply, we can write it as two pi by omega. And omega is simply the square root of this term, uh, this term over here. So this is our final expression for the time period of oscillations. So that was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, do like and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.